Hi guys, Gary RC here back on another video. So today's video, I am going back to the Mini Z MR03 Evo. So this is the uh, version I have with the uh, 5600 kV motor. I'm trying to, that's this blue motor here. And you've seen my uh, anniversary edition, which has the red motor mount and looks very nice. So I thought I would upgrade this uh, Evo to have better parts so I got the adjustable rear motor mount which is set for the uh, can be used on the 98 millimeter wheelbase I've got here so it's suitable for the VE as it says on the packet I also have uh, this adjustable uh, shocks damper set and uh, has a dual spring I think center shock and I got some uh, carbon fiber t-plates just to improve the strength and durability of that rear pod because the plastic does tend to break. So this is going to be one of my more traditional how-to videos. I'm going to take it apart and put it back together. Now guys, I've been making a point of this all the way along. I am new to the Mini Z rear wheel drive. I am learning how to set it up and race it. And with that said, I'm going to be getting advice from another YouTube chat YouTuber, Mini Z up. So it's Mini Z setup, but all one word. And his channel has some fantastic content. I have been watching a few of his videos. He's very knowledgeable. And guys, if you can, go ahead. Please subscribe to his channel. Give him some support. He's doing some great work there. And I will be going to him for my advice. So remember, I'm approaching this from a newbie point of view when it comes to the Mini Z rear wheel drive. So guys, we're going to start by disassembling the car. Taking the rear axle off first. Now you'll need the Allen key to get this rear section off. And typically I have misplaced, there we go, I think that's the one. No, it's not that one. Okay. This car needs a good old cleanup after it's racing. It's had some use as you can see. Right. And you might be wondering why the glue is there. That's because that part got broken during the last racing session. That's one of the reasons why I'm upgrading the shock. So let's take this apart. Is going in this. This is probably not the best screwdriver to use for this, guys. You end up stripping the screws if you're not careful. I'm being lazy here, but I have lots of spare screws at my disposal, so. This is a screwdriver you can get off Amazon. Lots of people ask me. I've I've put the link in some of the videos, but if you simply go onto a laptop electric screwdriver, you will find this electric screwdriver. Okay, so that's the rear pod off. All right, I'm going to take off this clip here so I can actually carefully get to the wires, disconnect the rear pod. So I'm also gonna replace the existing motor with this 12,000 kV motor because I have the opportunity to use a much bigger track next week and I can really stretch the legs on some of these cars. Now you can see the tires are very worn on this Mini Z that will be being changed too. Where does that come from now? Well, clearly I wasn't paying attention there. I think I've managed to... Yep, I'm assuming that's from there. Yes, it is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Right. Goes that way. The great thing about recording what you're doing is if you can't see where a part fell from, it doesn't take much effort to uh, 
rewind the video and work out what came from where. Okay. Right, so we'll put that to one side now. We're going to deal with this rear pod. Now, we need the bearings out the rear pod. I am going to take the whole thing apart just so you can see how it looks. But I won't be using this motor. I'll be saving this for another car. So it's got the motor mounts on there, which you change depending on the gearing to move the motor backwards and forwards, depending on what size pinion you're using. So there's a plastic shock absorber, which that's fine. Okay, we'll put that there. And we need the bearings out of here. I mean, I'm rocking that out carefully. I'm not forcing it. I don't want to wreck the bearings. Nope. This one doesn't want to come out. Got it. Okay. So I've stripped off everything I need. Do I need that? We shall see. Okay. Right then. So let's get to the fun bit. Let's open this new toy. There it goes. These are labeled left and right. Let's zoom in just so you can see them. Left, right, and left. So they've got little grips underneath them and they've got a sliding rack the grips here so you can engage how far the motor pad and this is how you can adjust the position of the whole unit front and back to align the wheel arches i think that's so you can change from 90 to 98 millimeters or 94 to 98 millimeters anyway so that goes there and the screw that goes in here is one of these little flatheads which is the smaller size one because you don't want it poking through into where the motor is going to sit Okay, off we go. Let's get the other one on. Same again. So there does seem to be a lot of adjustability already built into this motor mount, which is pretty good. So I'm not saying, guys, this is the best motor mount. This is just the one I've decided to try. And no doubt, trial and error, I will try a different brand as things progress. Okay. So... This thing has grooves in it now, so you can slide this in. That must be part of the adjustability to be able to move it up and down. So let's see where that's gonna go now. So I'm guessing that goes there like that. I have had a look at a diagram somewhere with a picture of the finished article to give me an idea, so I'm not completely guessing here. And in all fairness, guys, I have actually built one before for the other car. So it's not a completely scratch attempt here by me to avoid embarrassment. But I am trying to build it from memory. Okay, so that's where your rear axle is going to sit through. Right. Next, you've got your motor mounts that are going to go front and rear. So there's one little black screw that comes with this kit and that is specifically for this part of the motor here. So we'll screw that in separately. Don't think that's going to be small enough. Try this one here. Right, so that's your rear motor mount on. The tight, that's very nice how that tightens up. It's very secure. Okay, so there are holes in here in case you want to use a different mode set and not the standard Mini Z one, which is nice. And that locates onto the mount there like that. That's very easy. So again, another flathead screw there. So 
So no doubt this is how you adjust the distance from the pinion. We're just going to get this together first and I'll whack a pinion on it and we'll decide what distance we're going to go. Right, it's actually motor mounted. This part here has a slide on it. So you can slide it in here and that's your side arm that the suspension is going to attach to. So a screw goes in there. And before we do that, I can see that there is a screw here that will no doubt be for our suspension system. So that's before we go any further, see how far we've got here now. We've got four screws left here, which I am pretty sure. To hold together the t-plate and this side okay let's put the t-plate on just so we know where it goes there's space for four screws there i don't think that's there are four screws, but I think there's one short. That's the yeah. Okay, so I think we're missing a screw. What I'll do is I'll put that one in for now. Not a good start, X power, but we shall see. I might be wrong. No, you can't put those screws there. <laughs> right, two's enough. Okay, all right. Main shaft absorber assembly. So this is very similar looking to the Mini Z version that I've got on my other car. Some discs, some springs, and your main shock absorber there. Let's open that. So the way this works, pretty sure that this goes onto there. One spring goes here. One of these plastic discs go there. Right, and then this part goes on top. Another disc there, and then another spring, and then the suspension arm screws into the top of that, which I will do right now. instructions on how to put this together not easily anyway so I decided to do it myself there you go okay that looks about central that's our side arm there right The hole I'm using, there's two holes available here. And because I'm going for a 98 millimeter setup, I'm using the further out hole. There's a second one behind it there. Okay. Right, so the smaller screws are the ones that hold this on. The bigger screws are worth four. The T-plate underneath, these longer ones. So these are the smaller ones to hold this on. Tightened. Let's get the rear pod on, shall we? There we go, okay, the pod is in. All right, it's gonna cut these up for now, but I'm gonna put a new uh, zip tie on them to keep them out of the way in a moment, but just for the sake of convenience, let's get these together here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put the side arm on. Got a screw here. Again, this side arm seems to be adjustable as well. So I think that sets how hard the suspension pushes down. I think the lower, okay, more tension off the spring. So that seems to be working nicely. Okay, let's get the rear pod back on. This diff definitely needs a clean. Right. Okay, we are almost there. Where's the other plastic one? Oh, there it is. There we go, guys. Fully assembled. Just need to zip tie this back together so it's not going to get in the way, which, believe me, they do try and get in the way. Okay, yeah, we'll zip tie that there like that. Transponders there, that's my antenna. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna put a pinion on this now. So I was going to use an alloy pinion, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna show you how to remove using the old Mini Z tool here to get the pinion off. Okay. The reason I'm doing it this way, which does seem more difficult, is just so I can see what, how far I push that in. Now we'll do some adjustments just to line this up. Right. Hopefully I won't be. Okay. And there's the missing screw goes here. So we've got the exact right number of screws. I'm being premature. So that's how easily you adjust the position just by sliding these up and down. Now you have to, you can also adjust the vertical ride height on this at the rear by sliding the rear axle up and down, which I'll, I just demonstrated a second ago, but I'll just do it again here now. So you can, change it quite drastically but i'm going to lower it as low as it goes for now which means it's as high as it can be for now and once i'm on the track i think i'll manually adjust it okay so that's our rear pod on our shock absorber is on which we can adjust from here you can adjust the tension and that all seems to be working nicely so that's better than the setup we just had Let's see how that fits with the body shell. So I've got a Mercedes body shell for this at the moment. Which is heavily reinforced as you can see on the inside. Right, so I'm gonna pop this in here and see if the wheels line up. And as you can see, I've got it set too far back at the moment. So we just undo these two screws here. Slide it until the wheels kind of sit about right and then tighten it up. There is actually room to maneuver one click either direction, which is quite nice. And there we go. Done. Okay, guys, so that's just a how to video on how to set this up. We'll get some footage of this thing running next time. So, guys, if you like what I do here, subscribe to the channel, like the video. And stay tuned for next video with more Mini Z content.